ಯಸ್ಯಾಂತನ್ನಾಧಿಮಧ್ಯಂ ನಹಿ ಕರಚರಣ ನಾಮ ಗೋತ್ರ ನ ಸೂತ್ರ ನೋ ಜಾತಿ ಪುರುಷೋ ನಾಪುಂಸಂ ನ ಚೀ ನಾಕಾರ ನೋ ವಿಕಾರ ನಿ ಜನಿಮರಣ ನಾಸ್ತಿ ಪುಣ್ಯ ನ ಪಾಪ ತತ್ವ ನೋ ತತ್ವೇಕ ಸಹಜ ಸಮರಸ ಸದ್ಗುರು ತಂ ನಮಿ ಸದಾ ಶಿವ ಸಂಭಾಂ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯಮಧ್ಯಮ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರುಪರಂಪರಾ ಸದಾ ಶಿವ ಸಮುದ್ಭೂತ ಶುದ್ಧಜ್ಞಾನೈಕೀ ರಮಣಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಸಂಪೂರ್ಣ ವಂದೇ ಗುರುಪರಂಪರಾ ಅಪಾರ ಸಚ್ಚಿತ್ ಸುಖವಾರಿರಾಶೇ ಯೋರ್ಮಿ ಮಾತ್ರ ಭುವನ ಸಮಸ್ತ ಗುಹಾಹಿ ತಂ ರಮಣ ಗಭೀರ ಚಿಂತಾಹೀನ ಹೃದಯ ಚಿಂತಿ ದೇಹಂ ಮೃಣ್ಮಯವಜ್ಜಡಾತ್ಮಕಮಹಂ ಬುದ್ಧಿರ್ನ ತಸ್ಯಾಸ್ತು ನಾಹಂ ತತ್ತದಭಾವಸುಕ್ತಿ ಸಮಯ ಸಿದ್ಧಾತ್ಮಸದ್ಭಾವತ ಕೋಹಂ ಭಾವಯುತ ಕುತೋ ವರಧಿಯಾ ದೃಷ್ಟ್ವಾತ್ಮನಿಷ್ಠಾತ್ಮನಾ ಸೋಹಂ ಸ್ಫೂರ್ತಿತ ಅರುಣಾಚಲಶಿವ ಪೂರ್ಣೋ ವಿಭಾತಿ ಸ್ವಯಂ ವಿದ್ರಾವಿತಶೇಷತಮೋ ಗಣೇನ ಮುದ್ರಾವಿಶೇಷೇಣ ಮುಹುರ್ಮುನೀ ನಿರಸ್ಯ ಮಾಯಾ ದಯಯ ವಿಧತ್ತೆ ದೇವೋ ಮಹಾನ್ ಸ್ತತ್ವಮಸೀತಿ ಬೋಧ for so many years <coughs> we have been speaking and listening about bhagwan bhagwan's teaching bhagwan's devotees and also singing the verses and songs on bhagwan collectively all these are called bhagavatam adhyatmam bhagavatam means that which belongs to bhagwan it was a great glory vaibhavam that bhagwan ramun maharshi was here before the human eyes
and those who got the great anugraha good fortune of being with bhagwan they were like all their life they were in a kind of lahari inundation sharda ka and all they have seen so many of bhagwan's direct devotees including giants like muruganar they were all in incessant ramana lahari as paul brenton says about bhagwan something of the arunachala hill is there in the sage the silence like that they absorbed the presence of bhagwan in their being before going into the life of lakshmi we will just meditate on bhagwan's presence that maunam that mauna samadhi which spoke to everyone because that is the only language which everyone can understand pashurveti shishurveti they say even an animal can understand even a child can understand trees can understand you can see in ramana ashram every pillar and uh, the floor and roof has absorbed that presence that maunam that nishalata that vaibhavam many have seen in bhagwan's sannidhi that is the ultimate fruit of jnanam that maunam is there within us you can have that maunam in you when all the non self identities are gone shankaracharya says somewhere he says sarva anat ప్రత్యయ తిరస్కరణ ఫలం మౌనం అండ్ ఆల్ ద అనాత్మ ప్రత్యయాస్ మీన్స్ ఐడెంటిఫైయింగ్ విత్ వాట్ యు ఆర్ నాట్ ఈస్ ఆల్ గాన్ అవర్ థాట్స్ ఆర్ ఆల్ మేడ్ ఆఫ్ దాట్ ఎవరీ థాట్ ఈస్ ఐడెంటిటీ విత్ సంథింగ్ with that identity i am communicating getting related with someone else this is samsara this is where we are caught this is our mind in aksharamana male bhagwan says arunachala give me that delightful state that maunam where there is neither you nor i నీనాన్ అరప్పులి నిదం కళిమయమాయి నిండ్రిడుం నిలై అరుళ్ అరుణాచల అరుణాచల గివ్ మీ దట్ స్టేట్ వేర్ దెర్ ఈస్ నైదర్ ఐ అండ్ ఇఫ్ ద ఐ అ రైసెస్ ఇట్ విల్ గెట్ కనెక్టెడ్ విత్ ఎ యూ విత్ సమ్ వన్ ద మైండ్ విల్ బీ కాన్స్టెంట్లీ డూయింగ్ దట్ అవుట్వర్డ్లీ ఆల్సో వీ విల్ బీ డూయింగ్ దట్ అండ్ దిస్ ఈస్ హౌ వీఆర్ కాట్ కళిమయమాయి నిండ్రిడుం నిలై you can get a glimpse of what bhagwan is from that state 
களிமயமாயின்றிடும் நிலை மீன்ஸ் த ஸ்டேட் ஆஃப் நிர்வாணம் இன் விச் ஹி வாஸ் எவர் அபாய்டிங் சீங் விச் A saint sang about him as Asipadath Uruvanavan. Thuriyame, that Thuriyavastu is dancing here in his body mind. So many, when people went and saw Bhagavan, they saw not a person, they saw Brahma. The Upanishad says, Brahma Veda, Brahma Iva Bhavati. One who knows Brahman is Brahman. So people saw him as Parabrahma Vastu. When we study Vedanta, this is known to us, that when you see a Jeevan Mukta, he is Brahman. But till you see a Mukta Purusha, you will not get what it means. See, it is not simply human beings who, who saw that. Those who have a concept of Vedanta, only they saw that. Lakshmi saw that. Monkeys saw that. Squirrels, they saw that. And there are stories that some astral beings also saw that and they come and went away. At least physically it was seen that many people common people who have those who have seen bhagavan only once even recently few years back somebody told me na ramana maharshi patrke i have seen ramana maharshi and squirrels used to play in his body that is the thing that they remember monkeys used to come there and kanakamma used to say some about 15 16 years back some when i was talking to her i asked amma have you seen lakshmi she said paathirken avarva nadupula vande bhagavanoda toppaila thalai apdi kondu vacha she will keep her whole face in bhagavan's tummy and she will not consider who is in the way she will just move inside and see bhagwan so they remember that vyakyanam for bhagavad gita vidya vinaya sampanne brahmane gavi hastini shuni chaiva shwabake cha panditah samadarshinah whether he is a very knowledgeable person good man or bad man bhagavata says krure akrure chaiva either is a krura or akrura is all samam samadrak pandito matah that was seen in bhagwan even great scholars will come and illiterate people will come then these creatures animals will come birds will come all felt the same presence we don't know what it is but we can understand it that it is what the upanishad says that seeing the same self everywhere seeing the same atman everywhere bhagwan used to say you are wearing the human body she is wearing that animal body that is all to some other person bhagwan said why don't you call the tree a standing human being and a human being a moving tree only the outer form outer name differs the essence is same it is the same atma esmin sarvani bhutani atmaiva abhut vijanatah for whom all the creatures are nothing but the same self 
this idea is there but unless you see that idea absolutely manifest in a mahapurusha see you can get this idea very easily in vedanta shastra upanishad but to make it practical you will find it difficult recently i was thinking about it in our ashram dogs used to give birth to puppies puppies now and then so many kids will come so many dogs we cannot manage so what they will do they will take the children ene solva adike puppies they will take the puppies and put them somewhere where they will be safe some place where there is human habitation they will be taken care of they will live it's all their prarabdha only but you can see that the mother is affected it is just like human life but if we cannot do that if we fail to do that what we will say we will say we have to hand over the ashram to the dogs and go walk out whole night bo 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 and if you put injection to them and stop there becoming pregnant giving birth there also we very much doubt whether it is right or wrong this is called dharma sankadu all these problems you know why it comes how to solve this problem how to become samadarshitva what the sages found is some impractical solution and that impractical solution is the problem comes to you because you want to stay there and so you have to send them out the solution is you move away or learn to live with them don't have any place or ashram or anything your own if you can become a real sanyasi then you can have the whole world as your family few days back also i told the story of that monkey when monkey came to take the fruits that attendant drove him out drove her out she was a mother monkey bhagwan said she she is a sanyasi she has no place to stay she is carrying her child in her tummy and when a true sanyasi comes we drive her out and we think that we are sanyasis we keep all the fruits inside the store and keep the chavi in our hip idupula vechukro so we are the monkey is better than a monk with a key <laughs> so when bhagwan was living absolutely free for him they were all like his family devaraja mudaliyar one of the old devotees he has seen bhagwan when he was a small boy long long back when bhagwan was in virupaksha guha there he has seen after that after so many years only he came back he remembers that when he went to see bhagwan ramana there two hours bhagwan spoke about the story of the monkeys there it's not any brahma vidya or anything how the monkeys have their kingdom how they rule all these things he was very very thorough with that their warfare their family everything he knows so it was so natural to him that he moved with them with the monkeys with the even with uh, cheetah in the forest they used to come 
You used to look at them as the same Atma Vastu. So after coming to ashram also, you, if you go to Ramana ashram, now you find that mother's temple. Later on, Bhagavan was asked to stay there, requested to stay there. Before that, he was staying in the old hall and mostly outside, near the well. And he always liked that, to be outside. And uh, in the mountain also, they were living in the open air. That is the right place for a sadhu. So he liked that. But when they, he brought him to this temple, he used to say, he was very sad because the um, peacock cannot come. The monkeys are also banned. They cannot come inside. So he was feeling sad that his family members are not there. They were all his close people, devotees, two devotees. So this Samadarshitva, this is a very serious spiritual thing which we have to contemplate. Because even though you may meditate, you may do who am I, enquire, you may do Vedanta, which are avatame, whatever. The moment you come out and mingle with the world, there is difference in the world and the difference is going to affect you spiritually. It will affect you. Udaramantaram kurude athatasya bhayam bhavati. The Upanishad says even a little bit of separation will affect you. The more and more sensitive you become, more and more you will find this difference, this, this affectation, this spiritual affectation. Because your mind will wander. Whatever you may create that inner equipoise will be disturbed. Because you see some something, some attachment comes or some aversion comes. A little bit of thing, uh, they are all lower. That is enough. So this Bheda Buddhi is a great problem for a Vedanta Vicharashila. When you start living in the world, that is what Bhagavan said as Sahaja Samadhi. Sahaja Samadhi and Nirvikalpa Samadhi, don't confuse it. If you close your eyes, it is Nirvikalpa Samadhi. If you open your eyes, it is Sahaja Samadhi. Because when you do Vyavahara, if Bheda is there, Samadhi will break. That is in Arunachala Panjaratnam, the last verse Bhagavan says, Tvai Arpita Manasa. That is inner Samadhi. The mind is made to abide in the self in quietude, Shanti. After so much austerity, you attain that. But the moment you wake up and start mingling with the world, the mind will be disturbed. There he brings out this Tvam Pashyan Sarvam Tava Akritaya. All the names and forms, all kind of people, all kind of creatures, they come and relate with you, connect with you. You cannot live your life prarabdha without doing that. You may try by going into some cave, there you will bring a samsara. There also your mind will operate. So, you have to, your prarabdha will forcefully make you live the life that is waiting for you. So, once you come back to that life, then this difference, this separation is unavoidable. This vyavahara is unavoidable. And there you have two choices. Either to renounce maximum. There also you cannot renounce food, you cannot renounce sleep, you need a little bit of comfort. That is difficult. But absolute renunciation is possible only in the, as Bhagavan says this shloka, Tvam Pashyan Sarvam Tavakritaya. When you see everyone as Bhagavan, and how to see that, that is another question. See everyone as the Atma, the same self. Satatam bhajate. See, this is a very profound thing which Bhagavan says. 
it is a constant worship constant spiritual practice you can see in bhagwan's life that his very look see when bhagwan ramana maharshi looked at a person that person people generally say <coughs> ramana maharshi gave never gave any diksha he never initiated anybody he never gave upadesha to anyone this is the common thing what do you mean by upadesha is giving a mantra upadesha or teach him vedantam shastram is it upadesha that any university can do that any academic shin can do mantra also you can get it from now of course many ashramas they play record of their swami as mantra diksha that you can get from book also so the real diksha is something of the spiritual element enters that person you see somewhere recently i heard swami vivekananda uh, told one of his devotees in india he said do you think i gave talks in america in west i gave them solid spirituality he said so that is the thing it's not simply giving talks when that is there in the person it is giving the spiritual element so there it was like talks in bhagwan's case it was the maunam was so powerful actually the secret is not even maunam when he looked at a person it stirred the person very deeply that all devotees have said kanakama used to say i asked once kanakama eppo avadu bhagavan ta pesirkela have you ever spoken to bhagavan she said i pesirtha avadu eppadi pesirudu the moment i enter ashram first enter the gate the body will fall then you move inward the mind will fall and in his presence you don't exist how to talk that jnana tapas of bhagavan is the real advaita jnana nishtha that when he looked at a person he actually he gives the greatest respect because he looks at you as himself or he looks at you as arunachala swarupam as brahman and that look you know when someone looks at you with love you feel that joy when someone respects you you feel that joy even a dog will if you just give it love it gets flattered but a jnani is giving the highest respect to you by looking at you as bhagwan as ishvara and that look was so powerful bhagavata say has given a name for that bhagavata says it is anvikshiki vidya this is a special vidya and certain sages were adepts in that and bhagavata says narada was an adept that is why he could go to hiranyakashipu also indra also if some other sage goes they will kill him but when narada goes they knows that narada will directly whatever we say he will take it to indra and spread it there still they could not do anything because the moment they see him they also feel joy because he looks at the inner one the inner atman that vidya was very powerful in narada maharishi that that you know that we can also spiritually practice first thing is not to have any hatred towards anyone suppose if we have something of that element especially take that person in your mind and start worshiping him if you feel he is not good then take him meditate on him and tell yourself that within him is ishvara within him is bhagwan the atma the antaryami in him is ishvara and you pour forth all your bhakti on him then that hatred element will go that separation will go this is a yoga vidya this is practically we can do it as a sadhana also but in bhagwan's case it was in 
very great magnitude that whomever he saw he saw as there is no seeing in fact actually that oneness was there ananta drishti sadarshanam says drishti is ananta niravadhi no bound no boundary boundless vision there is complete oneness so that was so powerful in bhagavan this is the essence of vedanta you listen you do mananam and then you come back to your practical world and there you this tattvamasi you know aham brahmasmi is for me and tattvamasi for you inwardly i know that the aham in me is brahman it is the absolute truth and whomever i meet see we have to remember the aksharam malai song neena uh, narapuli the i will disappear by atma vichara the you also should disappear the you have to disappear because sometimes if the you comes the i will come you can be without i in aloneness but when you come to relative plane some person you don't like he comes and sits near you your i will arise ego will arise so to be completely free of that ahankara and to see the same being in all this is the essence of that sadhana where you will remain in samadhi while interacting in the world you will remain in that atma darshan sthiti with open eyes you have samadhi because yatra yatra mano yati brahmanas tatra darshanam wherever the mind goes it is seeing only brahman it is seeing only the atma nothing else this is the idea that the vedanta upanishads everything put forth this we saw in full blossomed state in bhagwan's life for him there was absolutely no difference between this man or that man this person or that person this creature or human being or even a tree or an animal for him all was same everything was same that samadarshitva was absolute this state in this state when a jivan mukta lives in the world so many beings will gravitate towards him this is the anugraha shakti and when bhagwan after his coming to trivarnamale stayed in many places in the hill major chadwick says he was not doing any austerity he was not doing any sadhana he was just taking rest in that moun uh, tk sundareshwar as said as children we used to go to virupaksha cave somehow there was an attraction to be with bhagwan we do not know what he is and we never thought that he was a human being we thought some deva is sitting there his body will be shining like burnished gold he will be sitting there hours and hours and hours and we will also go and sit with him and sometimes play with him sometimes sing some devaram and he will be sitting still like a statue so this many many years bhagwan stayed in arunachala after that ishwara himself brought bhagwan down to the valley bhagwan himself says somebody asked bhagwan why did you come down from the hill to the valley bhagwan said the force which brought this body to arunachala the same force makes it move from one place to another it brought it from the hill to the valley so 
when they came down that was after ayagamma's samadhi bhagwan's mother's samadhi chinna swami brought that body down and created a samadhi there and small hut there where now the ramanashram is bhagwan did not come bhagwan was in skandashram these few devotees were staying there making it a small hermitage and staying there and one day night they were making dosha and they heard a voice which says is there food for one more person they found bhagwan was standing there and they were so happy and they forced bhagwan please stay one more day one more day one more day like that bhagwan started staying in the valley for more and more every day bhagwan will think i will go back to skandashram and before he starts some devotees will come and he had to sit like that arunachala made bhagwan sit in the valley and ramana ashram was formed around naturally this there was no facility there some very interesting devotees were there that's all all uneducated people mostly and very funny people also one person used to dress like a soldier and stand before open ha huh? ha huh? soldier swami sipai swami sipai swami he used to stand like sipai all kind of people were there around bhagwan at that and we think bhagwan enjoyed that that is why when narayana guru saw bhagwan in skandashram he said raja sarpam he said bhagwan is like a raja sarpam just when his the person is out like that uh, in that presence itself jnana can happen but what to do all around are annakavades <laughs> he said people around are all only sitting there for food like that he commented when bhagwan heard this kunj swami said when he told bhagwan bhagwan also give some part he said something why don't you say something to them also something like that bhagwan said so uh, such very innocent people see that is a strange phenomenon with very maha, many mahatmas they like to keep such people around them because too much intellectual thing somehow disturbs a yogi i think the kanchi paramacharya also he had very interesting funny people around him uh, one devotee he does not know english or anything when devotee devotees were around so many people were there and one person said i am transferred to a distant place i need transfer to go back to my village please tell swami and this person does not know what transfer means he heard it wrong and he said avarku cancer vanu <laughs> <laughs> he wants he does not know what transfer and cancer is is cancer illa cancer illa transfer <laughs> so such people they were keeping with them so bhagwan was also like that all very interesting people and bhagwan's close friend rangan came to see bhagwan in skandashram and rangan had great family problem so much loan thousands of rupees he had to pay so he was under stress anxiety he has come to bhagwan and he was having sleeplessness and bhagwan spoke to him many things and was guiding him and another day when rangan came some person was standing and giving a great list of complaint to bhagwan after that person went away bhagwan said you know what that person said 
he has given come with a list from the nearby shop he says i owe him 600 rupees in those days 600 rupees is a big amount because somebody has bought so many things in the name of bhagwan and went away so see if ashram or any system is not there around you all people will come and exploit that problem is there if ashram is there that itself will become a problem so prarabdha cannot be avoided bhagwan said you cannot avoid the prarabdha as long as the body is there if you live alone that alone lonely stay will become a problem if you collect people around them they will create problem so what to do so don't fear prarabdha bhagwan said to gb subramaya he said don't try to avoid prarabdha don't fear prarabdha some form of prarabdha will be around even a jivan mukta in fact for a jivan mukta the prarabdha will be more powerful because all prarabdha will explode blast in that life so that will be happening so bhagwan had it is not that he was having a very peaceful life paul brendan said you can have this samadhi in this jungle but it is very difficult to be in this samadhi in city bhagwan said city and jungle are all same if you stay here then you will understand so the forces are not there are forces around every person which has their own toll to take you cannot avoid so bhagwan came down and the ashram slowly was growing around they were trying to avoid it but things will be happening 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 something or the other will happen and one day when bhagwan was standing in the ashram and some devotees were there very few of them one person with all his body basma everything was driving a cow and a calf inside the ashram his name was arunachalam pillai the moment he saw bhagwan he did a sashtanga namaskaram and with his body shivering tears he said sami ninga sonna badi na vandute bhagwan said enna sonna badi it is he is coming i think from gudiyattam it's a very long journey but i think 70 kilometers 80 kilometers away from tiruvannamalai i think so from gudiyattam he is coming to tiruvannamalai there he had a dream because his cow has given birth to a calf see how the destiny takes the person the cow has given birth to a calf in gudiyattam about 70 kilometers away from tiruvannamalai and that calf is lakshmi she is destined to be with bhagwan and that person gets a dream in which bhagwan goes to him and tells him i want your cow and calf you bring them to tiruvannamalai and that person is not a very educated person not a very rich person and you see his heart he immediately decides to take the cow and calf walks all the distance to tiruvannamalai and brings that cow and calf to ashram bhagwan said okay it is not possible to keep the cow here because there cheetahs also come so many thieves also come so it is not that easy to keep the cow safe so and nobody is there to look after the cow also it's not that easy to take care of a cow so bhagwan said it is not possible you have offered it you take it back and that devotee stood he said i will not do that if i have given i have given i will not take back and he was not ready to accept any money or anything for that because he had a dream in which swami has come and ordered him to bring the cow and calf i have brought it 
Bhagavan said what to do. They were having a discussion and Chinnaswami, all of them were there. They were saying how to keep this cow and calf. And there lies that Lakshmi has to stay there and someone has to do that. At that time, Ramanatha Brahmachari arrived. See, he was a gem of a person, great devotee of Bhagavan and very innocent, very simple. And he will be there to serve Bhagavan, serve Bhagavan's devotees, everyone. He is Bhagavan's Totakacharya. Because for him, uh, people used to tell Ramanatha, you are so close with Bhagavan, why don't you ask some Brahma Upadesham to Bhagavan? He said, I don't know. And one day Bhagavan, he asked Bhagavan, what is self-realization? Atma Sakshatkar. Bhagavan gave him a knock in his head and said, Onak Atma Sakshatkar kudutute. I have given you Atma Sakshatkar. He was so delighted and went to every devotee and said, you know what Bhagavan did? He knocked in my head. <laughs> not Atma Sakshatkara. He was not bothered about Atma Sakshatkara. He said, Bhagavan gave me a kottu. Who is bothered about Atma Sakshatkaram? He was not bothered about that. Bhagavan gave me a kottu in my head. That is enough for him. Such a great devotee, he said, Bhagavan, I will look after the cow and calf. And where will he? He has no home of his own. He took the cow and calf to the town, there with a the devotee. But before going, Bhagavan's eyes fell on this calf. It is like a Ayurveda Vaidya seeing a precious aushadi. <laughs> it was like that. That, that phenomenon, Shrinath Swami has written somewhere, Bhagavan will be not looking at anyone. So many will come around and sit around. Bhagavan's eyes will remain without flickering. Still, not, no person enters there. But suddenly someone will come, he will look that side. It shows that, that recognition, that Shaktipata which they call that is the maturity of the person. It, it receives that vision, that look, that gaze. So suddenly Bhagavan's gaze fell on that calf. Bhagavan went near and touched her and called her Lakshmi. Gave her the name Lakshmi. And the, that calf also, Lakshmi also, went very close with Bhagavan. It was licking Bhagavan's body and then said, Popo. They sent the mother and the calf to the town. You can imagine, now it is about two kilometers from the ashram to the town. And the next day morning, this calf, singularly, alone, it has come from town to ashram, to be with Bhagavan. And first they inquired how she came, without mother, and that person also came in search of Lakshmi and even she try, he tried to take her away, she did not go. And this became a practice that she will come, stay with Bhagavan and in evening, I think by 5 o'clock or so, she will return. And Bhagavan will say, you can look at the watch, you can decide the time when she re gets ready to go. Go back to town. So, Bhagavan, she became so close with Bhagavan, as Sharadaka said, she was one of the greatest devotees of Bhagavan. In fact, no other devotee was so close with Bhagavan like her. Even mother you cannot say. Because she can go to Bhagavan anytime and she will not care who is there. And she will destroy all the crops. And people will complain, Bhagavan, Lakshmi, apadipadna, apadipadna. Nida patakano, avala unu salopadata. 
you have to take care you should not complain about lakshmi and he was very partial with lakshmi because ishwara is always partial with devotee although he is a samadarshi he is very partial that is why arunagiri nathar in his tirukural tirupugal says pakshattodu rakshit arulvaye he says you should have pakshapadam to me because i have no other refuge no one to depend upon so pakshattodu rakshit arulvaye so he was very partial with lakshmi no, not other cows that shows see although samadarshitvam is there there is some are specially important because of their greatness because of their divine presence it it just invites uh, the attention of guru so bhagwan was so captivated by the presence of lakshmi we have to say so she will every day come she will go round bhagwan do pradakshinam to him she will walk with him and people will wonder what kind of being is she and one day she was standing there without any movement bhagwan's touch was there he said lakshmi samadhi larka and people are complaining bhagwan i am not able to do who am i mind is wandering while lakshmi he says she is in samadhi she is in samadhi and you know uh, after some years they brought her back to ashram there she will give birth and that to on bhagwan's jayanti many calves she gave birth on punarvasu margali punarvasu or at least punarvasu star so we do not know see bhagwan shankaracharya says you need not have a human body to have bhakti naratvam devatvam nagavanam rgatvam mashakata pashutvam kitatvam bhavatu vihagatva dijananam सदात्वत्दाबस्मरण परमानंदलहरी विहारा सक्त चेत हृदय किं ते न वपुषा लेट द बॉडी बी ह्यूमन और एनिमल और बर्ड और वॉट एवर इट मेट बी इफ देर इज भक्ति इन द हार्ट ही सेलिब्रेटेड बीइंग और शी सेलिब्रेटेड बीइंग सो लक्ष्मी इज द ग्रेटेस्ट डेमॉन्स्ट्रेशन ऑफ दैट people used to wonder because we think a manushya sharira is needed human birth is needed that is of course rationally it is true but there are exceptions bhagwan said like gajendra bhagavata the elephant got liberated and in bhagavata krishna says नगाह खगाह गंधर्व अप्सरस नागा सिद्धा चारण गुह्यका विद्याधरा मनुष्यु स्त्रिय शूद्र अंत्यज ऑल ऑफ दम गॉड लिबरेटेड बै सत्संग सत्संगापाययु दिस् कॉन्टैक्ट विथ ए ग्रेट बीइंग एंड कृष्णा से इज दट इज द ग्रेटस्ट स्पिरिचुअल सीक्रेट यु नो टीके सुंदरेश्वर इर् थॉट ही नीड साधना not simply sitting with bhagwan and not practicing anything so why not i will keep away from bhagwan for some days and do sadhana without doing sadhana what is the use of always coming and sitting with bhagwan so better do sadhana for some days so he left bhagwan and went away and after some days he could not resist because he was he was seeing her sadhana also was not happening the mind was also not peaceful and nothing is worthwhile happening so he rushed to bhagwan one day with a full restlessness he rushed to bhagwan bhagwan said sundareshwara he was waiting he said sundaresha one theriyuma iniki ni varama nooravadu naal bhagwan was waiting he said he has counted sundaresha era has not counted bhagwan said this is the 100th day that you have not seen me 
and you know now by experience that although you feel that you are not achieving anything by satsanga now you have understood what you lose by not having it this attainment of spirituality is not that easy to gauge to measure you will know when you lose it that is what the shastras call as pratyavaya dosha if you do everything you will not find anything happening because nothing solid will come but you leave it then you understand something is missing very deep is missing so that satsanga is a great spiritual secret and the greatest demonstration of satsanga is lakshmi the monkeys the peacock all and above amongst them lakshmi was the greatest perhaps and she was she had such uh, love for bhagwan that bhagwan also responded to it in the same way one day lakshmi came and she used to speak to bhagwan we don't know what language that is because naturally in the ashram the kitchen people every day they will give idli to lakshmi she liked it one day idli was over because some new guests came so idli is also not easy to the mau should be there so um, they gave her something else upama or something she did not eat she is very special and they thought okay doesn't matter because <coughs> only thing is if bhagwan comes to know it it is difficult so bhagwan anyway will not know it that is what they thought she directly went to bhagwan and told him i don't know why the kitchen person said idu enna bhasha yo eppadi tha pesralo enu theriyala she went to bhagwan and told and bhagwan called them why ena iniki lakshmi ki idli kudukaleyo they said uh, idli was over and the mauni isadu ku vacha idli irukume idli was some idli was kept for that mauni isadu he has went out to the market so that is kept there bhagwan said give her that idli and make upma for him you should give that to lakshmi so that idli was given to her such speciality you know malavaalapuram that is a special uh, banana so that bhagwan will keep separately for lakshmi because she likes it somehow there was a strange bond between them and she used to enjoy that presence come go round bhagwan and uh, when one devotee came to ashram gave some money to chinna swami and said make a cow shed to lakshmi by the time some calves are also there so make a small cow shed to lakshmi and chinna swami of course that time the mason there the head of construction was done by anamale swami so chinna swami said gave a small uh, what they call eh plan. plan small plan he drew a pl- plan and uh, th- that measure you make a cow shed at that time bhagwan somehow played with the Uh, construction and anamalai swami spiritual sadhana and chinna swami's mind he will silently come and tell anamalai swami draw a big caution that you are seeing now in another place not in the place where chinna swami suggested in another place a big caution this much big it should be you should and there one thing bhagwan said is you should make a very good cow shed for lakshmi by that punyam 
द प्लेस अराउंड विल बिकम वेरी प्रॉस्परस बिकॉज भगवान कंसिडर्ड हर से ज्ञानी सो इफ यू डू समथिंग फॉर हर बाय दैट पुण्यम बाय दैट वर्च्यू द एंटायर एरिया विल बी ब्लेसड That is okay. Bhagwan said, nobody will oppose. But you know what he said? Niye pandra da ha pann. Don't tell to Chinnas Swami that I have told you. Do it as if you are doing it, and all firing he will get. And of course, Chinnas Swami had doubt whether Bhagwan had played there. That is why he could not do much. And such big construction cow shed was done. after that they tried their best to take lakshmi inside she refused and she broke loose and came rushed to bhagwan and looked at bhagwan say eh na varata ulla pomatiyo bhagwan said oh you will not enter without me coming there the griha pravesham has to be done okay i will come so bhagwan followed and bhagwan walked inside peacefully she also walked inside and that was bhagwan's lakshmi and bhagwan you can see in video also how bhagwan pours forth his love to a cow and he used to talk to her speak about her greatness to others and all these things were there and uh, when later days she became very weak the time has come for her to drop her body and bhagwan every day used to go and look at her and she used to call her amma call her amma and that day bhagwan went near and some devotee came and said bhagwan lakshmi iniki mudinjadu pol irukku she is having so much very fast breathing so bhagwan went near and touched her in the head and her neck and everywhere he touched her and said everything will be okay devotees are waiting for me i will go said bhagwan and while going this very remarkable thing the attendant who was with him asked bhagwan why don't you stay with lakshmi till her she drops her body because bhagwan stayed with his mother so he asked bhagwan said amma ukku adu thevaya irundathu லக்ஷ்மிக்கு அது தேவையில்லை பிகாஸ் தேர் இஸ் நோ டிசேர் நோ வாசனா நத்திங் இன் ஹர் தேர் இஸ் ஓன்லி பகவான் வாஸ் இன் ஹர் மைண்ட் நத்திங் எல்ஸ் ஸோ இட் ஜஸ்ட் செட் இட் இஸ் நாட் நீடட் அண்ட் வென் ஷி காட் அப்சார்ப்டு பகவான் செட் லக்ஷ்மி விமுக்தா ஆனால் he said lakshmi you, you can see read that poem in lakshmi samadhi if you go to ramana ashram see that the tamil poem and english meaning also is there the day on which lakshmi got liberated mukta and somebody asked bhagwan is it simply a hyperbole or is it true bhagwan said it is verbally true it is absolutely true because she is a mukta she was a mukta and she took that body to be very near me and people say she was like kirapati who took the body of lakshmi later on kirapati was a great devotee of bhagwan and she took the body of lakshmi we do not know that such things but you can certainly see that in a animal body that gnanam was in full bloom that was a very rare phenomenon which devotees saw in lakshmi that she bhagwan said that is perhaps very few 
statements which Bhagavan said with firmness that she got liberated. She was mukta. She became mukta. So that is the story of Kau Lakshmi, Gomata Lakshmi. So see, that proves that how much spirituality is there in direct contact with the Mahapurusha and Jnani. Te avrataha atapta tapasaha nadhita shrutikanaha nopasita mahattamaha satsangan mamupaya yuhu. Bhagavatam Krishna says they have no varata, no austerity, no tapas, no austerity, no varata means no disciplines of their own. Na adita shrutikanaha, they have not studied any scriptures. Simply by bhakti, simply by association with me, they got liberated, says Krishna. This we can see with many of the devotees of Bhagavan. By association with Bhagavan, they got the highest achievement, attainment of that inner blossoming. So, satsanga is the sure medicine for this samsara vyadhi. And of course, when a human being goes to Bhagavan, when an in intelligent person goes to Bhagavan, he will also absorb the teaching. The teaching is needed, the teacher, the guru is needed, that bhakti is needed. You need bhakti, you need jnana, you need vairagya, everything. The spiritual life should be complete because you have to give your mind 100% to Bhagavan. Manasai Vedam Aptavim. You give the mind to the world and give your body to Bhagavan. He don't need your body. You can better give your body to the world and give your mind to Bhagavan. Or offer your body, mind, everything to Bhagavan. Then it will be purified. Shanti will be there. Our spiritual life will become fruitful. Then only our spiritual life will become, sadhana will become fruitful. Somehow we have to find ways and means to make our mind constantly recollect on Bhagavan. You can have your own ways by chanting his name or by meditating on his form or by doing parayana of the works. This will purify the mind and when the mind is sufficiently purified, jnana will arise. Then we will have the self-enquiry which Bhagavan speaks will naturally happen within. The I which is so intimate to us, we will start looking at it. Bhagavan says in his death experience, there was a strange fascination to follow the I thought to the source. And that fascination is Arunachala's grace. And that fascination can arise when the mind is absolutely pure. All sadhanas like chanting Bhagavan Nama or singing about him, or serving him in various forms, these are all for purification of the mind. Jagata Ishadi Yukta Sevanam Ashtamurti Braddeva Pujanam Uttamastava Duchamanda Daha Chittajam Jabadhyana Muttamam. All these sadhanas are needed. You have to do whatever sadhana you can. Somehow you, you take your mind from this. See, if you leave the mind as it is, it will go to the lower planes. So you have to lift, give a lift to the mind, take it from the lower planes to the higher planes. That is the first step. That is why we say we cannot inwardly do. So we go to satsanga or temple somewhere constantly lifting our mind from a very 
degraded state and slowly the mind starts recollecting on divine stories or bhagavan nama or something higher this is the first step don't directly simply say i am not able to do atma vichara i am not able to do people simply say i don't want anything i want only jivan mukti as if it is the easiest thing to get at least we should have that simple bhakti kadal perke arulvaye should have simple bhakti not seeking anything keep yourself in the stream of bhakti sadhana or jnana vichara reading good divine books chanting his nama physically also doing some puja or service or something somehow you have to transform your life this we can do in some way or the other intellectually also you should gain this spiritual knowledge mentally also you should have something to hold on and physically also you should have something to do when all these things are there it becomes a complete sadhana that is the success of tiruvannamalai see bhagavan's teaching of atma vichara is so subtle that is why people when they read it from a distance they find it so distant but when they come to tiruvannamalai you know that presence of bhagavan samadhi that an ecstatic presence of the place and you can go around the hill do giri pradakshana meet so many devotees so many who have renounced everything for the divine all these things are there <coughs> then you find you are able to float there lies the secret even if you have to stay in a city you have to find it find all these things by your own effort have satsanga on one side reading good books chanting bhagavan nama some physically also offering yourself to some kind of service some kind of bhakti sadhana if all these things are there after so many years shankaracharya in one of his <coughs> poem says the agriculture of spirituality will give harvest will get give good samvit phala bhunnati the fruit of jnana will slowly appear kedaram akalita mukti mahaushadhinam padaravind bhajanam parameshwarasya this kedaram means it is the like a paddy field and what do you sow there mukti mahaushadhi the great herb the seeds of mukti liberation you sow there and you water it with shraddha fence it with discipline and nourish it with all um, bhakti bhagavat katha everything is needed see all these things will at last give you that spiritual fruit you know when paul brenton uh, before meeting bhagwan when he saw that kanchi paramacharya in changalpet because swami was speaking tamil so he saw he says what the french people called spiritual is there in his face somehow what we call as brahma varchas brahma tejas you know that spirituality can be understood by the presence it can become so palpable many people when they came to ramanasham they used to say the presence is so palpable that you can cut it with a knife the maunam the silence is so palpable that you can cut it with a knife so the lakshmi episode is not over see last um, shivaratri uh, thousands of people generally in tiruvannamalai shivaratri will not be much crowded like kartika divam strangely formerly i thought oh shivaratri will be very crowded first my going to tiruvannamalai was on a shivaratri day so that day also it was 
not much crowded in those days but later on now recently every day is a crowded day so this shivaratri was also fully crowded so we few of us with some people singing akshara manamala were going round so we went to ramana ashram and after doing our namaskaram to bhagwan when we came out so see ashram is fully crowded one ashram dog somehow marked us and along with us it followed the entire giri production wherever we sit and sing he will also sit quietly very dignified way in a distance he will sit and we will start he will start no confusion no getting mixed up with other people uh, not uh, somebody try to give him something to eat that also he was not taking yes, smaran was putting something into his mouth no um, um, someone else suresh suresh was doing that putting it in his mouth that's all so he went round the entire hill and when we reached ashram he entered ashram and went it said and this is not the first time we don't know whether it's the same dog it has done with many other devotees before also so the phenomenon con- continues i will tell you one more story one devotee is still there in tirunelveli basi in his house there was a peacock and that peacock was called murugan they they named it as murugan and uh, people will come to that house give you no know, he liked very much that pavilamalli flower so that he will eat very tasty that was his delicious food so i have, they have taken even photo of myself giving him pavilamalli flower so that he will eat and one day uh, this devotee came to my house and told swami was he looked very worried i was about to go somewhere for a talk morning he arrived that was not the time when he has to come he came and said swami murugan is behaving strangely he is attacking people newcomers and he looks somehow affected what to do people are telling we should go and uh, uh, leave him somewhere in the forest and what should what can i do i have no idea about that so when we went to ashram i simply told maniyanna was there i told maniyanna what to do because he knows the nature of all this peacock monkeys everything so i told him this peacock is behaving strangely then maniyanna said uh we will send some ashram workers to his house with a big net because it is not difficult to handle a peacock when it is started behaving like this so we will bring the peacock to ashram so two workers went from ashram with a net and you know what happened when they went there the peacock by itself came and sat inside the net and they brought it that brought him to ashram and left it with other peacocks and the thing is next day that peacock was inside bhagwan samadhi the video is there somewhere it must be there because on that day full day it was inside samadhi it was sitting in the round sill and devotees who went round they used to touch it everything it stayed a full day inside bhagwan samadhi because he decided to come there after uh, a few days he dropped his body perhaps so the phenomenon continues see it is a jiva which wants to go there it is not the body whether it is a peacock whether it is a monkey whether it is a cow whether it is any other creature in valmiki ramayana rama tells lakshmana about jatayu sarvatra khalu drishyante sadhavo dharmacharina shuraah sharanyaah saumitre tiryagyonigateshwapi even animals 
Uh, other creatures also, there are Mahatmas. So to see the inner being and the strange behavior of such beings, you know, they all have that seed of liberation in them. Everyone is carrying that seed of Mukti Bijam. It is there. When the time is ripe enough for that seed to sprout, that being will move. See, in North India there was a saint Gondhuvalekar Maharaj in Maharashtra. With, with him I heard a dog was there, it used to fast on Ekadeshi. We human beings are not doing. It has its own samskara was there. So, Bhagwan, with Bhagwan, one dog was there, it used to always he used to sit only on an ochre rope. He will sit before Bhagwan, they will put an ochre rope, on that kashaya vastram only he will sit. And he will not eat before Bhagwan has touched that. People have tried giving him some sweet. He will not eat. If Bhagwan eats a little bit, then he will eat. And one day, another dog came outside. It started barking from inside the old hall. Bhagavan said, Kanna tarandatani tariyadu kanna mudu. Bhagavan said, because you are opening your eyes, you are seeing the other. Close your eyes. And instantaneously, the dog closed its eyes. They were all, they all came there to be with Bhagavan, a crow, a deer, Monkey, many, many creatures, they used to visit a white peacock. So many of them were close with him. And this is not a story that we can enjoy. This demonstrates the state of a mukta, a jivan mukta, an enlightened being. The thing that the Upanishad says that he looks at everyone as the Atma. It is not an poetical idea. It is not something which you can philosophize, think about, have Purva Paksha and Siddhanta. It is something which you can see directly. For that you have to see a Mukta Purusha where the entire Vishwam, Etra Vishwam Bhavatye Kanidam. Entire universe is one. No difference at all. No Bheda Buddhi at all. There Vedanta becomes Bhedanta. That Bhedanta. Ver hmm? ara vilangum. Vedanta te ver ara vilangum veda purul. In Vedanta that Bheda is removed. That separation is removed. There everything becomes one. Mrityosa mrityum apunoti yaiha naneva pasyati. The Shruti says, one who sees the nanatva, the plurality, he will go from death to death. Death means was, what? Limitation, separation, limitation, attachment, aversion, desire, anger. All these things are the result of that separation. And it is not that easy to remove separation as long as you have that desire in you, you have that survival instinct in you. That blow flowers fully in a Mukta Purusha. If we, can, we will take it in only partially. Wherever it is comfortable for us, we will say no by the buddhi. Only in getting married, no by the buddhi. Because that is comfortable for me. After everything, there is by the buddhi. It is not like that. That is why Shankaracharya said, by the buddhi is for avyavaharya. See, when a person has reached that state, he no more has any selfish interaction. He will not utilize it for selfishness. Because he has no selfishness, then only Beda Buddhi goes. For your own selfishness, you say, no Beda Buddhi, that is not Advaita Jnanam. That is Swarthada of its height. Needs height. 
So Bheda Buddhi is removed, that separation is gone, that Advaita Jnanam is there. Because uh, in that state where there is, the person is utterly, absolutely desireless, free, in such a state, his perception of that reality in everyone, that very perception is a very powerful force and that force work like a magic in others also. One word is enough or mere presence is enough to stir those who are mature to receive it. That very look will initiate them. The presence will initiate them. They don't need a special mantra or special word or anything. That is why Bhagavan said, for the jnani there is no disciple. Chadwick said, then what will we do Bhagavan? We have left everything and come to you thinking that you are my sole refuge, our sole refuge. Bhagavan said, you can have that bhava. That is yours. The Shishya can have that he is my Guru, he is my Ishwara, something like that. But if the Guru is looking at the Shishya as a Shishya, Bheda Buddhi has come. When that Bheda Buddhi is not there in the Jnani, his teaching will work. As Kato Upanishad says, only when Ananya Prokte Gadiratra Nasti, Aniyan hi Atarkya Manu Pramana. Ananyena prokti. The Guru is Ananya, no Anya, no otherness. That state Bhagavan lived and in that state played upon others also. The power, the impact was so deep. That power of that Advaita Jnanam, we call that it is Maunam, it is that, this, many things we say. It is the power of that Absolute oneness. That is why he said, Asipadattu Uruvanaman. The moment you go there, he is telling you, Tattvamasi, you are that. His very look tells that. That is, uh, that also without any language. That is why Lakshmi was able to receive it. Monkeys were able to receive the, that. Even to monkeys, Bhagavan taught you are Atma, you are not the body. Somebody said, will monkeys understand Bhagavan? Why not? If you can understand, they can also understand. Many of you are also not understanding. So, they will also get it. The same inner one is there, so it is possible. So, um, once you know, uh, for one full year, I never moved away from Palakkad. That time, you know, uh, not complete maunam, but not moving out, uh, staying in one place. So, there was a small jungle place. There I will sit alone and I was chanting one day because something has to be done. I was chanting no one else. And I was, in fact, I was speaking Vedanta, whatever comes inside. And I opened my eyes, I had two disciples, two mangus. They were sitting there like students in front. So we don't know who will receive it, who will come. Sometimes such strange things happen. When Sridharji was speaking somewhere in Pondicherry, one crow and crow came and was sitting in the shoulder of a devotee, all his Bhagavatam in front. So that such uh, things, because these beings, these creatures are a demonstration that the same self is there within all. And that highest achievement, attainment of Brahma Jnana, we saw in Bhagavan and Lakshmi, 
is one of the great fruit of bhakti as kvs wrote she was like walking narada bhakti sutram because narada bhakti sutram says nateshu jati kula ashramadi bedah no no difference of in whatever body they are that bhakti can happen anywhere so that is kau lakshmi it is a great inspiration for all of us that if we can have that bhakti whoever we may be wherever we may be we will also get that grace and by that kripa shakti our life will be fulfilled whoever we may be wherever we may be that kripa can make our life complete shanti can come to us that is spirituality not any outer achievement <coughs> so this is a great occasion that we had today to meditate on kau lakshmi and bhagwan we pray to bhagwan for his grace let his grace bestow that shanti that adhyatma anubhava in us arunachal shiva arunachal shiva arunachal shiva arunachalam arunachal shiva arunachal shiva arunachal shiva arunachalam arunachal shiva arunachal shiva arunachal shiva arunachala arunachal shiva arunachal shiva aruna eto mamatma bhavasitu meva tato na vachyam mama kinchit asti yathata veshtam kurumam tathaiva tvam atmanatham ramanam